Following on from our previous Kendo tutorial, today we're going to look at buttons within Kendo UI for Angular. If you haven't watched the setup guide, go do that now prior to this video. Ensure that you've installed the following packages inside of your project. We'll need the buttons package, the localization package, and of course the Angular animations package. Let's now open the project inside of Visual Studio Codes and inside of your app module. Ensure that you've imported the buttons module from Kendo Angular Buttons and your browser animations module from Angular Platform Browser slash animations. Import these both inside of our root ng module and then we can continue with the tutorial. So the first thing that we'll do is we will make a button inside of our project and the button will simply say Kendo UI button. You can see it's just a button element like you would expect inside of HTML if we save the file. We do of course get a standard button. To make this button a Kendo UI button, we first have to add the Kendo button attribute. And by doing so, it becomes a Kendo UI button. But at this point, you might not have any styling on your button at all. And that's because we need to install the Kendo UI theme. That can be done by saying npm install dash dash save at progress slash Kendo dash theme dash default. Now, in order to access these at progress packages, I would suggest looking at the first video in Kendo UI, as this details how to access that NPM registry. So once you've installed the Kendo theme, we can now ensure that our Kendo theme is added to our styles.scss. Now you must of course be using an SCSS project at this point. And of course we can import that progress slash Kendo theme default slash SCSS slash all. Now, if we check inside of Google Chrome, we can see our new Kendo UI styled button. It's very big on my screen because I'm super zoomed in. So let's take a look at actually adding some color to our button. To do that, we can add the primary attribute and say primary is equal to true. And if we save the file, now we get our primary color with some white text. So our button now becomes this orange red color. So I will copy this element and I'll add it here without the primary so we can see the difference between them both. So we have the two buttons here as well, but we also have another state for our button. We have the disabled state. So let's take the primary button and let's say disabled is equal to true. And as you can see, our button becomes a little bit faded out to show the user that they can't click the button. So I'm going to add a H1 on top of here that says button. But we also have something called a button group. So as you can see, we have these buttons. Let's have a look at button groups. So H1 button group. And we can access this button group by wrapping it inside of a Kendo button group. So let's type Kendo dash button group. And let's now add a list of buttons. So we can have three buttons or as many as you want. And I'm going to say this is button one. This is button two. And this is button three. Each one will have the Kendo button attribute. As you can see, now we have a button group. They are all aligned together as three buttons and we can click each one of them. When you have button groups like this though, you may want to have a toggleable function. So we could, if we want to add the toggleable attribute. So we'll say toggleable is equal to true. Let's add that on button two for now. If we click button three, button one, but then if we click button two, we'll see that it sort of stays in in this toggleable mode. We could of course add this to all of our buttons, but for now I'm gonna leave it on button two. Let's now take a look at drop down buttons. So drop down buttons within Kendo, and we can access that with the Kendo drop down button. So for now we could simply put something here like drop down button. And if we save the file, we'll see that we have a button that's a standard button, looks the same as all of the rest. But when we click it, nothing happens at the moment because we need to add some dropdown data. In order to add the dropdown data, I'm simply going to add a new array inside of our app component. We'll call this dropdown data, and that will be an array of type any. And from within inside of the array, we'll simply give it some text elements. So we can say text option one, text option two, text option three. If we then head back to our Kendo dropdown button, we can add the data for this button dropdown by saying the data attribute here is equal to the dropdown data. 
and the drop-down data is, of course, inside of our app component.ts. If we then click the drop-down button, we do get the option one, option two, and option three. If we wanted to add a click event to this, for example, when somebody clicks the item, we can access that with item click, and from within here, we can put an expression. So let's add a new function that's named item was clicked. And we can take an event as a parameter here. And you can do whatever you like, obviously, with inside of your button click. But for now, we'll simply say console.log and we'll log out the event. So we can say item was clicked and pass in the event data. If we open our console and we click our drop down button and then select one of these items, we do get the text of option two. If we wanted, we could add more stuff to our array, such as ID one and perhaps some other things like user options, X, Y, and Z. If we were to click drop down number two, we do of course get our user options array, our ID, and obviously our text. Another thing that we can take a look at is the split button. And we can use the Kendall-split button component. And for now, I'm simply gonna keep the same drop down data so say the data is equal to the dropdown data within the split button. And instead, we're gonna say split button for the button text. And as you can see, we have this button here, but we also have this button options that we can click and get different options from within our split button. So ideally, perhaps we want to have some functionality for this split button if we click it, but we also want to offer the user some other functionality within our list. We can use the item click method for whenever an item was clicked inside of our split button. So once again, we'll pass in our item was clicked function and the event, but we can also access when the split button was clicked itself. This is the button that's to the left of the options. And that is of course the button click attribute. So let's write a function and the function is going to be button was clicked and we can simply console.log the button was clicked. So let's add this to the button click attribute so we can say button was clicked. And if we check inside of our application, if we click the split button, we get the button was clicked. And of course, if we click one of the options, we get the various options that come along with the split button. We'll take a look at icons in more detail in the future, but for now, we can also add an icon to any one of our buttons. We can do that by adding the icon attribute and passing in an icon from Kendo UI icons. As well as this, we're not only limited to the Kendo UI icons, we can pass in our own, but for now, I'm simply going to pass in the lock icon. You'll see that our Kendo UI button now has that lock icon to the left of the text. So that should be a high level overview of how to use a lot of the button elements within Kendo UI for Angular. If you like this and you'd want to see more Kendall UI videos, then of course hit that subscribe button and let me know inside of the comment section below. Until next time, my name is Paul and I'll see you very soon in the next video.